We were kind of chatting away, like all excited, you know, because uh, we thought we were going to get to figure out what the sex was. And he just leaned forward and he said, I can't see any kidneys. I don't think your baby has any kidneys. These days, more and more young women are serving here in Congress and having babies while in office. In fact, Jamie Herrera Butler was only the ninth lawmaker in history to give birth while serving. It would be difficult under normal circumstances, and hers were anything but normal. So when you were first elected here, you two had just gotten married. Yeah. That's a way to start a marriage. Well, the first year of our <laughs> marriage was a lot of campaigning. But you know, go big or go home. And how long after you were elected did you find out you were pregnant? It was our, my second term, right after my second term. A few months after she was re-elected in 2012, she and her husband Dan announced that they were expecting their first child. And then came the devastating diagnosis, Potter syndrome. Their unborn baby had no kidneys. They took us into a back room and just said, there's nothing that can be done. Your baby's gonna die. And we're at this point, you, you just, you're weeping. If there is no, there are no kidneys, there's no fluid and their lungs are not able to develop. And he said, you know, a lot of women at this point would be across the street scheduling a, uh, an abortion. Did you consider at all for even a second taking his advice to go across the street? No. Um, it, Hear, being able to hear the heartbeat yeah. and knowing that she, she Abigail, she. we had this gut feeling of there has to be some yeah. something. So in my state, like As a politician, Butler is staunchly anti-abortion, but in this, the most personal of decisions, she says her political views were not a factor. It wasn't really like, let's go through where our, you know, our mind in this, it was more of our gut. We got to, and that was the word we used, uh, contend. We're going to contend. For Butler, that meant taking the heart-wrenching news public. My colleagues were amazing, but every time someone saw me on the floor, you know, you kind of watch a little bit of a shadow, right? Because it's sad. Going public paid off. A stranger read their story in the paper and suggested an experimental treatment that might be possible. But most hospitals wouldn't even return their calls. Johns Hopkins did. So we went up there the first time and she said, look, we don't treat this. I will not be able to do serial infusions. And so we really had to, to we had a, almost a sales pitch. I mean, we- So you were negotiating your Oh treatment. my heavens. We, and any parent who's been in these situations will tell you, this is, you have to, you learn on your feet. And it's not new technology. It was, it was a willingness issue. Immediately when that fluid was introduced, yeah. her chest heaved and she began to breathe that fluid in. And so you don't know what's happening, but you know that she's doing what she's supposed to. You started to go to Johns Hopkins how often and what time? Because I do it when I was here and we'd have votes, so I'd try and get up there by like 7.30 so that I could be the bellway traffic back in and then you go on with your day. By the second and third week and the fourth week, it all corrected. Do you think that, in all honesty, that you were successful because you're a member of Congress and you could convince the doctor to listen to you? I don't think we'll ever know for sure, but the one thing we have committed and we know is true is maybe it took this to break through because now she's not the only, she's just the first. There are other babies who have survived because of her. Mm -hmm. And you gave her your kidney mm -hmm. so that she could live a normal life. I don't think there are many parents who wouldn't jump at the chance to help their kid. One of them is Lady Liberty and here there. Now Lady Abigail Lady is three Liberty. years old and watching her, you would never know the trauma that she went through. She is a medical miracle, the first baby to ever survive birth without kidneys. She seems like just an average kid. Playing with her baby brother, playing with her dolls, hanging out with her parents, except, of course, that her mom is in Congress. All right, let's roll. The House will be in order. Members will please take your seats. I do bring my daughter with me to work. She goes onto the floor to vote. Dan Butler not only gave up his kidney, he also gave up his career path. He quit law school to take care of his family, and his wife says that modern approach to gender roles has helped her do what she's doing in Congress. Let's just be honest. It usually is, if there's a supportive spouse, yeah. historically, it's, it's the lady. woman yeah. who stands behind the, the guy. Yeah, he's amazing. And what I'm proud of is like, he's showing my daughter 
he's showing my son mm -hmm. that a real man looks at a family and says, how can I help lead this family? And for him right now, that means he's, I mean, he's taking care of my baby and he gave her his kidney, right? So he's, he's, he's quite an amazing person and I hope to get the chance to do the same for him.